What is going on everybody? It's Conrad back with another video and I, like a lot of you, am very interested in the future of the field of artificial intelligence, uh, specifically around the conversation surrounding AGI or artificial general intelligence. Will we get these sort of super intelligence scenarios that Nick Bostrom prophesied in his book? The field is really interesting. So what I've done is I've compiled a list of just AI thought leaders, scientists, people who have been working in the field for a while and their thoughts on AGI as well as the future of AGI. Overall, you're going to see that because we don't really have a firm definition of what AGI exactly is, there's a lot of different opinions of when it will come, but pretty much everyone seems to agree that AI is going to have even greater impacts on our society moving forward in the future. But enough of me talking, let's see what the experts have to say and let's get right to it. People use extremely definition, different definitions for what AGI is. I uh, think it makes more sense to talk about when we'll build systems that can do capability X or Y or Z rather than, you know, when we kind of like fuzzily cross this one mile marker. It's not like, like AGI is also not an ending. It's much more of a, it's closer to a beginning, but it's much more of a mile marker than either of those things. But what I would say is I expect that by the end of this decade, possibly somewhat sooner than that, we will have quite capable systems that we look at and say, wow, that's really remarkable. If we could look at it now, you know, maybe we've adjusted by the time we get there. Well, when, when things are changing rapidly, the, the ability to predict the future, I think, is uh, becomes a lot harder because of the rate of change is so great. But I think some things are fairly obvious to predict, which is that we'll have AI or AGI that's at a level that it can really do almost any cognitive, I think really not almost, really any cognitive task. It's just a question of when. One could debate, is it, you know, smarter than any human at the end of next year, or is it two years or three years? But it's not more than five years, that's for sure. Right, the idea somehow, which, you know, is popularized by science fiction and Hollywood, that, you know, somehow somebody is going to discover the secret the secret to AGI or human level AI or AMI, whatever you want to call it. And then, you know, turn on a machine and then we have AGI. That's just not going to happen. It's not going to be an event. So, uh, you know, it's it's not just around the corner. I mean, I've, I've been hearing people for the last 12, 15 years claiming that, you know, AGI is just around the corner and being systematically wrong. And I knew they were wrong when they were saying it. I called their bullshit. <laughs> Intelligence is not a linear thing that you can measure with a scalar, with a single number. Um, if we define AGI as uh, a piece of software, a computer that can take a whole bunch of tests, and these tests uh, reflect uh, basic intelligence, um, and uh, uh, and by achieving by 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 completing those tests, uh, deliver results that are uh, fairly fairly competitive to a normal human. Um, I would I would say that within the next five years you're going to see uh, um, obviously uh, AIs that can that can achieve those tests. So I think AI does have risk. There is bias, fairness, concentration of power, amplifying toxic speech, generating toxic speech, um, job displacement. There are real risks that the AI community takes seriously, working on hopefully actually for the most part working really hard to make things better. Then there is the overhyped existential risk where AI wipe out humanity. Um, I'm less worried about that for, for a couple of reasons. One, um, the hard takeoff scenario where AI isn't working that well yet today, but suddenly overnight, May 31st, 2023, we suddenly have sentient super intelligence and then 40 hours later it's taken over the world. Technology doesn't work like that. It actually grows gradually. So we'll see it coming. And humanity has lots of experience controlling entities any more powerful than a single human. Corporations and nation states are much more powerful than one person, but we you know, for the most part manage to steer them for the common good. And then lastly, I think humanity does have existential risk. Maybe an asteroid will do to us what it did to the dinosaurs or climate change leading to massive depopulation. Um, and I think, or, or the next pandemic, you know, fingers crossed. When you look at the actual existential risk that face humanity, mm. I think AI will be a large part of the solution. So if you want AI, humanity to survive and thrive for the next thousand years, I would much, much rather make AI go faster to help us solve these problems rather than slow AI down. I think it's very clear, just taking a step back, that we had a big breakthrough in the last year, yes. right? Where the the LLMs and diffusion models basically reached a a scale where they're able to do some some pretty interesting things. And then I think the question is, what happens from here? And just to paint the two extremes, on the um, on on one side, it's like, okay, well, we just had one breakthrough. If we just have like another breakthrough like that, or maybe two, 
then we could have something that's truly crazy, just like so much more advanced. And, and you know, maybe we're only a couple of big steps away from reaching something that looks more like general intelligence. Okay, that's one, that's one side of the argument. And the other side, which is what we've historically seen a lot more, is that a breakthrough leads to, in that Gartner hype cycle, there's like the hype, and then there's the trough of disillusionment after, when like people think that there's a chance that, hey, okay, there's a big breakthrough, maybe we're about to get another big breakthrough, and it's like, actually, you're not about to get another breakthrough, you're, maybe you're actually just gonna have to sit with this one for a while, it could be five years, it could be 10 years, it could be 15 years until you figure out the, um, the kind of the next big thing that needs to get figured out. But I think that the fact that we just had this breakthrough sort of makes it so that we're at a point of almost a very wide error bars on what happens next. Yeah. Um, I think the traditional technical view, or the, uh, like looking at the industry, would suggest that we're not just going to stack in a like breakthrough on top of breakthrough on top of breakthrough like every six months or something. Right now, I think it it, it will. I'm guessing, I would guess that it, will, that it will take somewhat longer in between these, but um, I don't know. The emergence of vision half a billion years ago turned a world of darkness upside down. It set off the most profound evolutionary process, the development of intelligence in animal world. AI's breathtaking progress in the last decade is just as astounding. But I believe the full potential of this digital Cambrian explosion won't be fully realized until we power of our computers and, and robots with spatial intelligence, just like what nature did to all of us. It's exciting time to teach our digital companion to learn to reason and to interact with this beautiful 3D space we call home, and also create many more new worlds that we can all explore. To realize this future won't be easy. It requires all of us to take thoughtful steps and develop technologies that always put humans in the center. But if we do this right, the computers and robots powered by spatial intelligence will not only be useful tools, but also trusted partners to enhance and augment our productivity and humanity while respecting our individual dignity and lifting our collective prosperity. Predicting the next token well means that you understand the underlying reality that led to the creation of that token. It's not statistics, like it is statistics, but what is statistics? In order to, un to understand those statistics, to compress them, you need to understand what is it about the world that creates this, those statistics. And so then you say, okay, well, I have all those people. What is it about people that creates their behaviors? Well, they have, you know, they, they have thoughts and they have feelings and they have ideas and they do things in certain ways. All of those could be deduced from next token prediction. And I'd argue that this should make it possible, not indefinitely, but to a, to a pretty decent degree to say, well, can you guess what you, what you do if you took a person with like this characteristic and that characteristic, like such a person doesn't exist, but because you're so good at predicting the next token, you should still be able to guess what that person would do. This hypothetical imaginary person mm -hmm. with far greater mental ability than the rest of us. For the past decade, I've deliberately given very long timelines just because I didn't want to fuel some kind of stupid Moloch race. Yeah, um, but I think that cat has really left the bag now, and uh, I, I think uh, we might be very, very close. I, I don't think the Microsoft paper is totally off when they say that there are some glimmers of a AGI. It's not AGI yet. It's not an agent. There's a lot of things it can't do, but um, I wouldn't bet very strongly against it happening. Very soon. That, that's why we decided to do this open letter because you know if there's ever been a time to pause, you know it's today. But what do you think? I personally agree most with Andrew Ng and Jan LeCun. I think AGI is far away, but there's still a lot of really important things to do with AI in the future. 
But thank you all so much for watching this video. Make sure to leave a comment down below on your thoughts of AGI, what you liked, who you agreed with, who you didn't agree with, what AGI even is for you, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.